saber rattling. He promised to counter what he described as Russian aggression by increasing military buildup through NATO's presence near Russia, NATO a key aspect of U.S. security policy. Now, the Baltic Sea region is quickly becoming a friction point between Russia, NATO, and the U.S., with NATO military exercises underway and a lot of close encounters. I was joined earlier by James Carden, Washington correspondent for The Nation magazine. He started by telling me for what NATO is preparing. It was recently announced that um, NATO is going to be sending in 4,000 uh, troops to Lithuania and Poland as part of the European Reassurance uh, Initiative. Um, that's a $3.4 billion um, initiative designed um, ostensibly to reassure our NATO allies in light of what has been happening uh, in eastern Ukraine. In addition to that, the United States has sent in the USS Donald Cook, which is a um, missile class destroyer um, about 50 miles away from Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad, uh, a lot of Americans don't know, is a Russian port between Poland and Lithuania, and they have a major naval base there. Um, and so the effect of, of, of these um, maneuvers by the United States and NATO um, has been to uh, increase tension in the region. So what exactly is the aggression that they're worried about? I mean, this is a lot of, this is a lot of militarized presence that they're gearing up for. Yeah, what they, what they claim to be very worried about is um, a repeat of what has happened in eastern Ukraine. The entire Europe must calm down in the knowledge that the Pentagon would do anything in order to protect Europe from Russia. On Monday, the Pentagon deployed a pair of F-22 fighter jets to southeast Romania in an effort to deter hypothetical Russian aircraft. The US Air Force aircraft arrived at the air base on the Black Sea, less than 400 kilometers away from the Russian military stronghold of Sevastopol on the Crimean Peninsula. The US Air Force has deployed F-15 Eagle Air Superior to fighter aircraft to Iceland and the Netherlands. Several NATO countries as well as non-members such as Finland and and Sweden are sending planes to Estonia for the first massive Air Force exercise to feature civilian airport aimed at training for interception of aircraft losing contact inside Finnish airspace. The two-day exercise called Rammstein Allo 1 will kick off at the Estonia's Amare Air Force Base next Thursday. It will be involving warplanes and air crews from Belgium, Spain and Poland as well as non-NATO members such as Finland and Sweden. This is an emergency broadcast. This is a direct message to the Department of Defense, all four branches of the military, active duty, service members, veterans, their families, state governments, local governments, and the media. We are going to display 100% irrevocable proof that there is a global move, not just here, but all over the world, to militarize police and to put standing armies on the streets to suppress the population and to carry out political operations. It seems strange that at the same time when we have huge military drills, military hardware movement and FEMA training in the US, in Europe we have 600 members of various European military forces recently conducted an exercise in the German North Rhine province ready to be deployed in the event of civil unrest or war. Why in the world Italy streets would be patrolled by Chinese police? That shows a very strong message that Vatican will be partially protected by China during a major crisis. Finland 
Defense Minister Yusi Ni Nisto said Russia doesn't pose a threat to his country. But then why would Finnish government send a reminder to 900,000 soldiers to prepare for war with Russia? Because it's a mind game tactic used by the mainstream media. On top of that, additional 40 guided multiple launch rocket systems and warhead rockets worth $150 million sold to Finland, just in case NATO stockpiles military hardware in Norway. So we have uh, what are called preposition uh, gear, both in caves and on ships and it allows forces from the United States to come out and fall in on gear that is already forward deployed versus bringing all that gear with us. M1A1 tanks, amphibious assault vehicles, artillery and logistics equipment support NATO allies. So any gear that is already forward deployed both reduces cost and speeds up our ability to support operations in crisis. So we're able to fall in on gear that is basically ready to go and respond to whatever that crisis may be. It always take it takes time to deploy forces to a certain area. When you have material, equipment, preposition, you can uh, fly in the personnel and you will be faster ready to do conduct operations. So that's uh, always an advantage to have that preposition uh, in stocks in order. The equipment will support exercise cold response 16 starting later this month. We fit easily together when we are operating. In the last 10-15 years we have been operating together in Afghanistan and other places and uh, when you move to Norway you will always operate in three dimensions because we have a long coastline, we have land territory and the air. President Obama is back at the White House this morning after a week in the Middle East and Europe. Air Force One touched down Monday evening at Joint Base Andrews outside Washington. We spoke with the president yesterday in Germany in a wide-ranging interview. He had just announced 250 more American troops will go to Syria. They will help in the fight against ISIS, also known as ISIL. Us dismantling ISIL is a priority, and although we are not going to be sending ground troops in to fight, uh, we are going to try to find out what works and then double down. And one of the things that's worked so far is us putting special forces in for training and advising of local forces, mm -hmm. but also intelligence gathering. Let me pivot to China. Mm -hmm. uh, Europe's Secretary of Defense has been in the region. How aggressive do you see the action in the South China Sea? And do you worry that they will cross some line in which you'll have to respond more aggressively? I've been consistent since I've been president in believing that a productive, candid, uh, uh, relationship between the United States and China uh, is vital not just to our two countries but to world peace and security. We're a lot better off with a China that feels confident. It's not a zero-sum game. It's not a zero-sum game. What is true though is that they have a tendency to view uh, some of the immediate regional uh, issues or disputes uh, as a zero-sum game. Uh, so with respect to the South China Sea, uh, rather than operate under international norms and rules, uh, their attitude is we're the biggest uh, kids around here and we're going to uh, push aside the Philippines or the Vietnamese. But it doesn't mean that we're trying to act against China. We just want them to be partners with us. And where they break out of international rules and norms, we will. Uh, we're going to hold them to account. And what about North Korea, finally? North Korea is a massive challenge. Uh, our first priority is to protect the American people and our allies, the Republic of Korea, Japan, that are vulnerable to the provocative actions that North Korea is engaging in. Uh, they are erratic enough. Their leader is personally uh, irresponsible enough that we don't want them uh, getting close. But it's not something that lends itself to an easy solution. We could obviously uh, uh, destroy North Korea with our arsenals, but aside from the humanitarian costs of that, uh, they are right next door to our vital ally, Republic of Korea. One of the things that we have been doing is spending a lot more time positioning our missile defense systems so that 
uh, even as we try to resolve the underlying problem of, of, of uh, nuclear development inside of North Korea, we're also uh, setting up a shield that uh, can at least block uh, the relatively low-level threats that they, uh, they're posing right now. President Obama has launched the US most massive military buildup close to Russian and Chinese borders. This piece of information clearly shows a very strong message of the beginning of a major conflict between major superpowers such as NATO, Russia and China. As you are watching this video, we have missile defense shields being set up and being installed in Israel, in North Korea, Eastern Europe and Russia. When United States is testing its new intercontinental ballistic missiles, we have Canada asking to join US missile shield to enhance national security. Canada has suggested it may join the US missile defense shield. Then we have the installation of the US missile shield in Eastern Europe along Russian border. Russia has opposed US and NATO plans to deploy anti-missile systems close to borders with Russia. Washington Washington says that the anti-missile system would not threaten Russian security. Russia will restore a missile attack warning station near Crimea to counter an increasing NATO activity in the Black Sea. We have 4,000 cruise missiles pointed at Putin that would enable Obama to deliver precision-guided non-nuclear airstrikes anywhere inside Russia in less than an hour. When Putin calling Obama's new missile shield in Eastern Europe along Russian border a direct threat, we have Poland setting up a new missile shield, and then we have Romania setting up a new missile shield. We have US anti-missile base in Poland put by Obama, and in Kaliningrad we have Putin threatening to put nuclear missiles there. We have Putin activating S-400 defense systems all around Russian border with Eastern Europe, and we have nuclear missile systems patrolling Moscow streets. We have Norway and the US planning to establish a new military radar post in Vardo, Finnmark, in addition to the already existing US Globus 2 radar system. Let me show you on the map where all the missile defense shields are being set up and being installed in Eastern Europe. Just look at this map. Here we have Putin in Moscow placing S-400 defense systems all around Moscow. And we have some in Kaliningrad. Here we have Obama setting up a missile defense shield in Poland and Romania and putting radars in Norway. And in all these countries we have NATO and US military training at unprecedented scale. Watch my new video on military training and military hardware movement by Putin and by Obama in these countries. The link to my new video as always will be below in the description box. Just little bit more than 70 years ago, we had a great war between major superpowers. Today, in the same place, on the same map, we have the same superpowers in the face of NATO and Russia preparing for a major war. Just remember, only little bit more than 70 years ago, in the same place, on this map, millions and millions of people died fighting for the same forces that are preparing a major conflict today. My biggest concern is that during World War II there was no nuclear weapons available in such a big amount that is available today. And in the same place on this map there was no nuclear power plants, so the war was limited in scope. While the Allied forces lost hundreds of thousands of citizens during the course of the conflict, at least 27 million Soviets were killed during what's known in Russia as the Great Patriotic War. 
The Eastern Front also proved the deadliest for Nazi Germany, with 74% of their war deaths occurring there. Almost every single Soviet family suffered the horrors of this war. Only 37% of all men drafted to the front line survived till the end of the conflict. Now I want you to pay close attention to this information. Washington continues to prepare a global strike, according to the Deputy Foreign Minister of the Russian Federation. The United States continue its destabilizing activities. This includes the creation of a global missile defense system, the continuation of the development of tools capable of inflicting a disarming strike without using nuclear weapons. The rapid global attack system of the United States provides the establishment of a hypersonic system which will be able to apply high precision non-nuclear strikes from American territory at targets on Earth within an hour. This system will cause a non-nuclear strike disarming strategic nuclear forces, including those of Russia. 24 generals from 13 NATO countries gather in Latvia to train joint operations. We are prepared to fight and win if we have to. NATO's focus will expand from assurance to deterrence, including measures that vastly improve NATO's overall readiness. Lithuania is hosting large-scale military exercises involving the country's forces as well as soldiers from other NATO member states. Another Baltic state, Estonia, started a major military drills involving NATO troops in the country's regions near the Russian-Estonian border. NATO is deploying an additional four battalions of 4,000 troops in Poland and the three Baltic states. Do you remember when we had in the news saying that NATO would deploy 4,000 troops to the Baltic states and when the next day that figure increased to 4,000 NATO troops being deployed to the Baltic states? Poland Poland is set to double size of its armed forces. The Polish army will be bigger. We envision a substantial increase in the size of the army by at least 50%. Poland's armed forces, which currently have around 95,000 personnel, would grow to 150,000 personnel. Poland launched an ambitious 10-year defense project aimed at upgrading its military forces. According to Deputy Defense Minister Czesław Mrozek, in April 2016, Poland would choose a supplier of anti-missile defense system, which will reportedly cost around 10 billion US dollars. In total, Poland was planning to spend around 42 billion US dollars on its military upgrade over the next 10 years. Poland's military modernization program includes a missile defense shield, anti-aircraft systems, submarines, combat drones, armored personnel carriers. The Georgian army has begun the two-week Nobel partner military exercises together with American and British forces. We're already going under a form of martial law. So let me show you some of the news we already went to in our earlier report, then I'll go to a smattering of the other evidence right here. Much of it from the Department of Defense's own website. You have massive military gear being cached, armored vehicles, machine guns, helicopters, night vision, Humvees, with the police departments around the country. California has gotten the majority of it, uh, along with Oklahoma and other areas to population. Texas has gotten double what California's gotten, and we have 10 million less than them. Oklahoma got basically double what California got, even though the crime rates are very low, because it's about suppressing the Patriot population, just like they have on the map in Jade Helm showing Texas, Utah, and other areas as hostile. This is pre-caching to fight real Americans that won't go along with gun confiscation, you name it. Now, when you see InfoWars.com articles I'm going to show you, you can go directly to the site, click on it, and go to the Department of Defense's site. DOD training manual, extremist founding fathers would not be welcome in today's military. Close quote. Army-sponsored reports suggest new police force. That's World Net Daily. What's that out of? A stability police force for the United States, RAND Corporation. This is the martial law plan. 
that I've been covering for 18 years. War gear flows to police departments, New York Times. Feds preparing to invade Texas, list state as hostile. They are preparing, not saying they're gonna invade or take over, they are preparing for the takeover. And that's in the John Warren Defense Authorization Act of 96, 97. They admit for insurrection by legislatures and governors. They just hope, just like Obamacare, you don't actually go read this stuff. Obamacare is great. It's really working. We have to make sure America writes the rules of the global economy. Because if we don't write the rules for trade around the world, guess what? China will. Why in the world we would have such strange things happening on the land of freedom? What is very strange is that we have FEMA conducting biggest drills ever inside the US. We have all those FEMA executive orders set in place. We have Walmarts closed and being converted into detention centers according to some videos on YouTube. We have an unprecedented military hardware movement inside the US. We have this movie Amerigedon coming out on Friday the 13th. We have another movie called X-Men Apocalypse. We have FEMA and DHS conducting riot control drills. On top of that, do you remember those articles saying that DHS has purchased more than 2 billion rounds of ammunition, which is enough to fight a war for 10 years? Do you remember those articles saying that US government has purchased 30,000 guillotines? Do you remember red, blue, green lists? Do you remember FEMA coffins, when at the same time we have US and NATO setting up and activating missile defense shields in Eastern Europe, on Russia's doorstep also in North Korea and inside the US? What do you think? Please share your thoughts by leaving a comment below this video.